Yo, yo, welcome back. Today we are going over part two of the Clockwork U console with the Hacker Gadgets uh, SDR kind of all-in-one board that you see here, that guy right there. Uh, so that is the U console antenna quick mount designed by HackerGadgets.com. Uh, hacker I will put a link in the description below for all of this stuff that you're gonna be needing or seeing here today. Today we are setting up Meshtastic. Uh, I closed the last video saying that we're gonna kinda of get to Meshtastic and I finally had time and I got it figured out. So today I will walk you through how to set up Mesh Meshtastic for your devices. And this will be the Meshtastic CLI. Diving into it, we're gonna go over here to the screen and we're gonna go back to the Silly Putting 24 Notion site. We ran through all these steps last time with the basic SDR lower GPS RTC USB hub setup guide. Uh, Hacker Gadgets, maybe you like wanna like create like a little acronym for this board because that is a mouthful. So anyways. Not that it really matters, right? We are gonna go down all the way down over here to the Meshtastic LoRa settings right there. And you're gonna need to uh, get into your terminal. And we're gonna just kind of run through this. So I already have it running on my device, so I'm not gonna change too much of my stuff uh, because I don't want to ruin it. But my mouse is running kind of slow, so we're just gonna kind of hopefully get through this. Another option that you can do is SSH into your U console from an actual uh, computer. Uh, right now I'm using the U console with the keyboard and a mouse and then my secondary screen is my iPad Pro. So you're gonna need to do sudo nano first and foremost and then you can go ahead and paste that. And there we go. You're, Screen should look something like this right here. Now, if you're running a Pi 3, then you're gonna enter your this data next down in the Pi 3 section. If you're on a Pi 4, which the majority of us will be on the CM4, then that's where we're gonna be at over here. So we do need to make sure that the DT param or param equals uh, SPI on, so spy on, and then the DT overlay equals spy one dash one CS. So you can see here that I have that enabled on mine and ready to go. And then to save that, you're just gonna hit control X. And then if there was changes, mine didn't have any changes, control X, then you're gonna hit Y for yes, and then enter to get out of that area to edit. This is gonna be pretty simple. We're just gonna fall down the line right here. And then next we're gonna go to this C, this C portion. If you're using Rex's bookmark image, you need to stop the dev term printer service. I tried stopping mine and I don't know if it was the update that I had. So you may not need to stop yours, but just run this command regardless. And I'm going to show you what mine did. This mouse is not going to work out for me. I can tell you already. Copy, paste, and we're just going to paste that in here and enter. So I got this red failed to stop, yada, yada, yada. I got that for both of these services that I was trying to stop, so I'm just gonna skip that part, but uh, I would recommend that you follow that step. D is gonna be sudo apt install, oh, too far. Sudo apt install the uh, lib GPIO dev. So just copy that, paste it in there. Your uh, terminal do its thing. You're gonna have to pay attention to hit Y for yes to continue. And then once it's done, we're gonna move right on step E is gonna be wget the GitHub, the actual mesh, Meshtastic firmware. So you can go to the Meshtastic GitHub and then download the latest uh, for the wget and then also of course the latest for the sudo apt install. Or if you want, just follow the link in the description below and you can update later on. Um, so dealer's choice on that. If you're comfortable with going to GitHub and getting all the information, then do that. If not, then just follow the steps. And like I said, you can update later on. So after you do that, again, you're gonna run that in terminal and then just copy, paste, copy, paste, yada, yada, yada. And then Y for yes to allow that to go. You may need to enter sudo uh, wget on that portion if you do not, if your Pi has some weird permissions going on. Um, just FYI there. The second part, F over here, uh, we're gonna have to modify the lower module configurations under the 
Meshtastic mesh mesh config YAML. I'm gonna show you a few things here. This one, I do need to go sudo nano, and then just paste that guy as is and enter. Yours is gonna look a little bit different than mine. I deleted a lot of this, uh, the stuff that was in the hashtag portion, um, just cause I wanted to clean up a little bit. But your lower module, what you're gonna have to do is just go ahead, go over here and just copy that entire area for that Laura. And then I just recommend just going to your lower settings or the lower area over here. And then just from the Laura to the colon and then all the way down to where before you get to the GPIO, just delete all that and then just copy and paste just the lower module. You need to make sure that it is the SX1262 for the Hacker Gadgets RTL SER Laura extension board. So again, just copy and paste of what you're seeing over here on the website and you should be good. Before you close this and move on, go ahead and go down and do the GPS as well. Same thing, you're gonna scroll down over here on the terminal, it'll be right below GPIO. And then again, just delete the whole GPS section and then copy and paste what that. The main thing is if you're on a CM5, you need to change your dev slash TTY AMAO. Uh, for the rest of us that are on a CM4, leave it as slash dev slash TTY SO. And then before you close it and save that, let's go down over here because there's one more thing that we can do while the YAML is still open and that is the web, the, the web, the web server uh, port. So copy that web server right there and you're gonna have to go pretty far down over here on the terminal area. You're gonna go all the way down past touch screen, past, past input and uh, past logging and then you'll see the web server port 443 and then you need to copy and paste that in there. And then once you have those three things done, then you can go ahead and hit control X, go back over here, wrong one, control X. And then if you had those changes, you hit Y for yes and then enter to exit out of there. Once you have that done, we're gonna scroll back up, boop, 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 back up right over here to the create mesh mesh i cannot say mesh tastic today <laughs> to the create mesh tastic d services so copy that pseudo nano all the way down to that services and we're going to copy that guy right there paste him right there in your terminal and hit enter now it's going to pull up this window right here i just recommend hitting Control a or command a or just select all delete the whole thing and then just copy and paste that right there, that shell. So you need the unit, the services, and then the install. Just copy and paste the whole thing in there. Just make it easy. That way you don't have any actual miss typos or misspells and then down the line you're gonna be giving yourself a headache. Speaking from experience, so just copy and just delete the whole thing and then copy and paste it. And then, like I said, you're gonna hit Control X to exit out of there, Y to save, and then enter to close of that area. Once we are there, we can go to the reloading system, the services, the enabling MeshTastic to start on boot, and then the start MeshTastic services. So pretty simple right here. All you can do is just copy and paste each of these commands into your terminal. So starting with the MeshTastic, copy, paste, enter to run, copy, paste, enter to run, and so on and so forth, all the way until you get down to that last area. Once my screen stops messing up on me, once you have those three uh, services going, you can check the status, the status of your Meshtastic services. And to do that, if I can get this mouse to work, this I'm gonna, I'm gonna shoot this mouse. I think I would do a video on that. I think I'll take this mouse, I'll put it in the can cannon, and just shoot it to hell. Showing you that the Mesh Meshtastic services do work, man. I tell you what, man, today is one of those days. I'm just gonna use the U console because I am kind of done with that mouse. Services, starting services, right? So we're just gonna go to that services over here on that web page. Like I said, I'm just gonna be done with that mouse. Copy that system L status meshtastic D, and then we're gonna go to our terminal. I went too far, right there and we're gonna hit enter to run that. And then you can see here that we are running MeshTastic. It is enabled and get your butt in my face. And okay, uh, it's been running for the past 20 minutes for me. Um, and then you can see, of course, all your CPU usage and such. So are you like done or what? Can you move? 
All right, second portion of this is going to be, yeah, I know, I love you, I love you, yeah. Second portion of this is gonna be going over here to the uh, view out, view the log output. So if you do wanna see and make sure that there is a log of things currently going, you can copy that. And then to exit this area, just control C. Enter control C to get out of there and then we're gonna go ahead and paste that other area that we wanted in there as we discussed. So hit paste, enter, and then here is the log of what is going on with, we wish, with Mesh-tastic. Uh, you can see here that we have the info and then if we do scroll over to the right there, we can see that we have all that we have loaded and such. So everything is running as it should. Now, if you have any errors over here, then I, rec I recommend going back to each one of those portions and then double checking all your settings and make sure that you entered or copy and pasted those things incorrectly. I had a few errors a uh, few times on mine. So speaking from experience, be patient with this all with all this, but just kind of follow the instructions almost down to a T because you will save yourself a headache. Now that we're there, I'm just gonna hit Control C to get out of there. Be able to go down over here to uh, bullet point I or section I, and we're gonna go to our web browser browser man browser, and we're gonna hit HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash local host. So I already have mine up and going, but you know what? I'm gonna close mine for some giggles, HTTPS, and then there's a populated for me, hit enter. And your initial loading of this page is gonna give you a warning for a bad SSL. If you don't know what that is, you're gonna see a warning, website unsecure, or something of that nature. Scroll down to the bottom, you're gonna see a little advanced area, click on that guy, and then say open website or load page. Uh, just follow that and then it'll open up to the Mesh-tastic web CLI. From here, we're gonna to go to new connection and you need to go to your area here and we're gonna type in local host. Uh, so don't, do not use the one that is auto-generated. It needs to be local host because you're locally hosting the services off your actual own board. So it's not on an actual website. So once you're there, you can then hit connect. If all worked for you, then a uh, web interface should look like this. Your Meshtastic node board should have a designated number. So for instance, mine is 3455. Five. Uh, you can see your charging status, your volts, the version of what you are currently running. And then you can have your messages, your map, your config. So a few things to set off right away is you do need to go to the config portion. And then you're gonna to go to the LoRa section up there and then uh, you're gonna pick your region. So I'm in the US, I select US. If you're in whatever country you're in, then select the appropriate uh, channel for yours. Uh, Cause that'll set the frequency of what your board is gonna be transmitting and receiving at. So for us US people, that's 915. I think if you're in the European area, that's 868 or 433, um, so simple as that. And then if you want, this is a, uh, not a must, but you can go and turn on your GPS. So you go to position, uh, which is right next to the device area, position, and then you're gonna go to enable that GPS. And then once you're done there, you can then save those settings and give it a few seconds or minutes or whatever to save. And then it'll say they have been saved which is what you want. And after that, you can go to your channels and uh, you can set your channels up if you know how to do that. I kind of have my own setup. So I will show you also how to do a custom channel import uh, because there is no camera obviously on the U console unless you want to add one, then you could then use your camera then to screenshot or to take the uh, QR code from your iDevice or if you have another device that already has channels set up on it. You're gonna go to settings and then if you scroll down to share QR code then you can share this QR code and you can do share QR code and link. So if you do that, email it to yourself is what I did and then from the email there, I can then go into my personal email, grab that link, copy and paste it into the channel set and then hit apply and then that'll populate 
my channels that I have. So that is a way to do it. If there's another way, then by all means, please share it in the description below, comment down below. Um, I am not a Mesh-tastic CLI or Web GUI Pro by any means. I run mostly the SenseCap uh, by Seed Studio T1000E uh, because it's so paper thin. After that, then you can go down here and you can see your nodes if you do have nodes in your area like I do. From there, you can always go to Messages. So if I go to, let's go back to my nodes and I wanna say I wanna, eat, I wanna message myself here. Uh, let's go to Direct Message and uh, let's just go yo yo. If this all worked as it should, you should be able then to test this out with nodes in your area or yourself. So yo yo and then yo yo. So we can see that Meshtastic is up and running on the U console Clockwork Pi and that is simple as that, right? Okay, one more thing that I wanna share with you guys is that somebody had asked me on the comments or it was in my Discord if SDR trunk can run with the Rex's bookworm image. And yes, it can. And I already have it downloaded. I don't have it, the app actually installed yet, but I just went to SDR trunk on the GitHub and I downloaded the, the latest version, which I think is the final version, because I have not seen any updates since the past year or so. See here that we are running SDR trunk. And uh, if we go over here to our tuners, uh, we can see here that we have the RTL 2832 tuner. That is the hacker, hacker gadgets SDR board. That's the one that you want. After that, pretty much it's just gonna be configuring the SDR uh, trunk to your liking. SDR trunk is very, very new to me, honestly. So it took me a little while to get it semi-configured. I'm still learning. Um, it's not as easy as like SDR plus plus. We go to over here to, we have tuners. We can go and select the RTL, yada, yada, yada. That's the one that you want. So that is my tuner. And I go over here to user preferences. A few things here. We want to make sure that our output and tones is going to be out of the U console itself. So you can see here that we have the default stereo. You're going to need to create a JMBE audio library. Uh, so just go check for update and then let it do its thing. Um, and then you just create your own library. And that's just kind of be, that's going to be like where all your decoders are going to be set up. Uh, the initial boot up is going to take a while because it has to calibrate the SDR trunk to your Pi. Um, so it takes like maybe like two to three minutes to do it. So just leave it alone, let it calibrate its, and stuff. It does run a little bit slow because you can see down here at the, at the very, very bottom that our CPU usage is maxed out about. Um, and then our used memory is fluctuating quite a bit. And then our allocate memory is even being used. Kind of power hungry program for a uh, Raspberry Pi. It does work. So you're gonna wanna go to playlist editor. Uh, if you have a radio reference account, it's like 30 bucks a year, or you can do 18 bucks for half a year. Um, this helps out a lot because you're gonna log in and it's you can then put in your address or your zip code or your city and state, and it's gonna populate all of the uh, channels in your area that are trunked, um, that are county agencies, state agencies, national agencies, and uh, county trunk systems as well. So that's for all of your P25 and then your other encryptions that you plan to listen in on, if that is legal in your area. Be aware of that, fall local and state laws. Uh, yeah, I hope this helps. I hope you guys enjoy this video. Um, thank you for your time, I appreciate it. Uh, if you have any questions, reach out to me in my Discord, link in the description below, or go check out the Clockwork U Console Discord, or you can also uh, check out the forums for the Hacker Gadgets SDR. Um, there's plenty of data and information out there to read through to help you kind of get set up how you want it to go. Again, thanks for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you for watching. If you're new here, I do a few videos a week. So like, subscribe, hit that little notification bell and uh, stay tuned for some awesome things to come in June. Uh, and then I will also put a link right here for or here for the part one of the setting up the U console with the Hacker Gadgets SDR RTC LoRa GPS board. Thank you guys, appreciate it, and I will see you guys in the next video.